Hey, welcome back to, I guess, another video, and I am sticking with it. This is my second video, and um, I got really good feedback from a friend, and so I'm sticking with this. So, my last video, I did a library haul, and I got some really cool books, most of them as yeah most of them were children's i do have some adult fiction but i did not get to it in the month of february i always say every month is a good reading month if you read at least one book so i've read several children's book and i finished one adult fiction so i'm going to review them here and yes they all have the theme of either black joy black pride black love black acceptance of in, in being a black person um i'm not going to say person of color because i, I it was black history month and as an african-american a black woman i love being a black woman so the first two children's books that I did read was Prince's Hair and My Hair is Magic. And I loved, actually, I want to say, I first I appreciated the, um, inclus the inclusion of all girls, different shades of skin, different type of hair, um, textures, different type of hairstyles. I mean, the hair wraps and the TWA, the teeny weeny afro, the bantu knots. I appreciated seeing that because as a black girl, I am light skinned <laughs> and several light skinned women, they tend to have either you know, their texture of their hair may be different, maybe different than mine. So seeing that representation in this book was amazing, as well as seeing the representation of, I believe she probably was either um, Afro Latina, Afro Latina um, in this story, but seeing the pride that this little girl has because of her hair is amazing. And I am a big advocate of children being able to see themselves represented in books, movies, TVs, art, anything. And both of those books regarding hair was was a great um, was great in representing those children, representing those um, the children um, and the divide the diversity in hair and hair textures. So I love those books. The writers was awesome. The writers were awesome with how they wrote the story. Um, I loved how, especially this girl, where she talked about people wanting to touch her hair and ha asked so many questions about why her hair is so fluffy, why it's so frizzy. And she's like, um, my hair is me. And I love that. And it's a great reminder of anybody if we are all different, we're all unique, and we all have distinct characteristics, and they are part of who we are, regardless if people accept them or not. So I love that. My next book I read was Josephine Baker. I want to get this series. It's Little People, Big Dreams, and it is basically an autobiography of Josephine Baker and just as well as all of those in the series and there was so much information that I did not know about Josephine Baker one of them being that she was a spy during World War II and she kept secret notes in her music sheets which is amazing so I did not know that and that was great new information and these are great for um you know young children to see and learn about people that most times you, they're not taught in school when they get older. I mean, I doubt anybody learned about Josephine Baker during Black History Month. So it was good to see that in this story. And the illustrations, of course, were so beautiful. 
The next story I read was Be A King. And this was, I did not have this in my hall because I had my assistant read it to my class. But this one was great in showing that we can all do our part to help keep Dr. King's dream alive. Um, I know every year children learn about Dr. Martin Luther King either in January or February for Black History Month. And it was great to see how young, old, abled or not, you can do your part by showing respect and kindness to all those who you um, come in contact with. So I love the representation of all types of people, all types of cultures, all types of abilities, um, because many children who may be in wheelchairs may not see that they can still partake in being a great citizen. And just seeing, like I said, seeing the representations in these stories is amazing. I think it's awesome that the authors and illustrators are including everyone in their stories. And I think this is an important, this is important because we all can do our part to show respect and love and kindness to all the everyone um we come in contact with and that's very important that was based that was what dr king talked about regardless of skin color culture language we all can treat each other with respect this one here for beautiful black boys who believe in a better world Oh my word. This book was amazing. I, I I am going to order this book and buy it because the topics that were discussed in this book, despite it being thin, it it um discussed racism. It discussed, discussed gun violence. It discussed um, killings of unarmed black men and black women. It discussed children's feelings about what's going on and discussed parents' feelings. It dis discussed protesting. This book here, if I remember last year when all of the protests were happening, this should be one of the books that they just that is recommended to read. Besides, besides the, um, I can't think of it. It's gonna to come to me when I'm done with this video. But many people talked about just anti-racism and doing your part, and this here should be a book that's recommended especially for families because it gives you at the end of discussions to have at home. I mean, it has, it has you as a parent asking your child questions um, and allowing them to share their feelings um, because we live in a tech-driven world where information is thrown at us through cell phone, tablet, TV, radio, gain all over and no matter the age of a child they're going to come they're going to come across it and having your child really process it and it allow them to ask you questions and you give them answers about what's going on excuse me is important not just for their social emotional health but just for you to at least have that dialogue i'm both me and my assistant at work, I'm, I'm a teacher, if you didn't know, we are big on social emotional um, feelings and social emotional education. And this book made me think about how many times my son, my kids, my daughters, even the children in my classroom might be, might have been exposed to something or seen something and 
they're thinking and they want to know or you know they're not quite sure how to ask or how to feel based on what they saw or what they were exposed to and the little boy grows his hair um he wants starts off by saying i want to grow my hair into dreads and each day week his hair grows and i believe that to me i think the growth in, in his hair sh um symbolized the growth in who he was and growth in just finding out um how basically the growth in how he kind of just becomes aware in what's going on i mean you can see the hair the length and he at the end of the story is like i'm tired of people getting killed i'm tired of what's going on it's it's bad and he wants to know what can he do and his parents gives gives them you know suggestions of what they do and he's like even though i'm small i still can do something to help the cause and the back it says how can you change the world and that question is asked to children but I believe it should be asked to adults. How can you change the world? And even though you may think you are not rich, you're not famous, you don't have following, I think no matter who you are and how old you are, you can still make changes. And I love that all of these books teach about self, um, about yourself and, and um self-pride and changing yourself to better the world and even though we may think the changes may be minimal it's still something so yes and the last children's book talking about I guess self-esteem and self-confidence is all because you matter I brought this book from Target and oh my goodness I don't know about anybody else but even though I'm in my 30s I'm not mentioning my age um at times I feel like do I really matter you know am I important um and this book starts from the journey of a child being in the womb um to growing up and mattering and I loved how in the story it talked about the children that you may be seen, you know, you may be seen um, by others and viewed by others. Your name may be funny, like they, they show the little kid's name. Your name may, may be different and it may seem funny to other people. Your skin color may be darker than others. You may, you may feel like you did not get good. You did not do well on a test or a homework assignment, but despite all of that, you matter. And I thought that that was amazing. One reason is because many children of color don't see themselves represented it rep represented in books, movies, literature, anything in a positive light, and seeing. A book written to black children and telling them that you matter means the world. And sometimes some children may not get it from their parents, from family, from friends, from teachers. Oh, I can tell you stories about that. And seeing this book made me just think about all of those kids who probably have not heard the words you matter you belong we appreciate you you're awesome hearing those positive phrases um this this was a this was great i i really enjoyed it and i'm sorry that i i feel like i'm mumbling or i'm like <laughs> um rambling on about the stories but as an educator i am big on representing all children um, in my classroom, reading about their cultures, reading about their language and where they come from, and reading books to show them that they matter and they care is something that 
that te- that I love to do. And despite majority of my reading have has been children's books lately, I even felt <laughs> um, good. My self esteem and self confidence increased and um even if you're an adult pick up a children's book and get inspired i mean these books inspire me to embrace my natural hair these books inspired me to do the little things to try and make the world a better place the, these books ins- made me see who i really am and know that i'm val- valuable and know that i matter um is amazing so those are all of the children's books that I've read and my last book that I read this month was an adult fiction it is um, tonight and forever by Brenda Jackson I did not share ratings for children's books because unless if they're poorly written I tend to give them either yes it was good or no it was bad and all of those books were excellent exceeded my expectations they were perfect this book I'm giving, I gave it a three and a half stars on my Goodreads. Um, it was a solid book. Um, it, it was good. <laughs> so I will say, first, it was published in 1995. So there were some outdated references in the book that I had to kind of like think or look up. Because, of course, in 1995, I was not mentioning my age. I was young. So some of them I um, wasn't quite sure of, but um, it's about a girl named Lauren and a gentleman named um, Justin who they meet at a party. Justin, of course, falls in love at first sight and Lauren kind of rejects him. She is coming out of a really bad marriage. She is a divorcee. And I don't want to say she has a bad taste in her mouth from that, but she's not looking for a husband. She wants to continue writing her books. She wants to not getting any relationship. She wants to avoid men at all cost. And here comes Dr. Justin Medeiros. Um, and she finds out that he is her neighbor. And yes, <laughs> then we find out from the story, not only does Lauren come from, or Lauren or Lauren comes from a really comes out, it's coming out of a really bad marriage. Dr. Justin, um, is a widower. His wife passed, his wife passed away. And so, of course, he wants a wife, but he has met several women and does not think that he's met Mrs. Wright. And so both of them are coming into a situationship (laughs) um, with past hurts. And we go through their struggle throughout the entire book. And... I believe that's why I gave it just a three star because I think some of their struggles and some of their conflicts were either too like loose or too, um, uh, they, they were realistic, but they weren't really real realistic. And then Lauren, Lauren or Lauren's husband comes in near the end comes into the story near the end and the conflict between them is very like not that strong I mean because we think the author makes Lauren's ex-husband to be this um butthole I'm trying to say keep my words nice but a real idiot and so you're thinking, okay, this guy, when he comes into the picture, there's going to be a lot of conflict. And the conflict and the struggles is not, is, I don't want to say weak, but I expected more of a struggle and more of a conflict between Lauren and her, and her ex-husband and more of that, like, I want you, I want you back and I'm going to prove to you and just that 
um, because of course I've been through heartache <laughs> and um, some of the struggles were like, but then again, it was written or published in 1995 and maybe we didn't have as many, you know, <laughs> horrible breakups, horrible marriages back then. Or maybe there was and people didn't really identify it. So, but it was a solid read. I enjoyed it. It was good. I breezed through it. I wanted to know how it ended. I was kind of sad how it ended. I think it ended very um, weak. Um I don't want to spoil it, but I expected a little bit more from the ending. Um, but the 0.5 in my rating comes from the spicy little romances that was written in. I'm not calling the scene smutty, but they were pretty they were pretty darn spicy. I my eyelid my eyebrows were like, hmm. <laughs> I enjoy that. Um I did look up if it was a series, and it is, and um, am I going to continue with the series? Not quite sure, um, but I think that if I need something to read, I might keep reading it. So I might continue with the series. I might not. I'm not quite sure. Um, it was, like I said, it was an easy read. It was a quick read. Um, I think I might continue the story because I know that Lauren's friend and Justin's brother tend, um, was interested in each other. So I might want to see how that relationship comes into play. But Brenda Jackson, I do, I must say, I like her writing. Um, there was a bit too much narration in between the chapters and the conversations between characters but the way that she her the way she builds her sceneries the way she writes her characters is amazing so I might continue with more Brenda Jackson's books I'm not quite sure if it's going to be this series we'll wait and see so those were the books that I read last month in the month of February um this month starting out March is not starting out on a good note <laughs> but we shall see I have a lot of historical fiction that I want to read I have a lot of women's books because it is National Women's Month and you know I'm all about women pride so I hope you enjoyed this video and um Yes, and I will, I guess, keep on recording and you keep checking out. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. If not, I am not hurt at all. But yes, so I hope to update you on any other reading. And I do actually want to do a library video because I love my pub. I love my local library. So, and majority of the books that I did review was from the library. So. I hope you have a good day. God bless. And if you find any time today to do anything, I hope that you pick up a book and read. See you later.